You're listening to the Mobcast Network. Why did you execute the Rosenbergs? Because Chico needed some money. <laughs> so, a couple of days ago, I'm working at my desk. And I, I am known to wander on Twitter. And I'm looking at Twitter, and I see what I considered heartbreaking news. Um, I found out that someone that I admire, someone that I listen to almost every week to a point where this person is almost like family to me. And I don't know this person at all. This person never met me. I've never met this person. And I was looking forward to one day meeting this person. And now I'm not going to get that chance. I've been kind of in a weird place about it. I am talking about Gilbert Gottfried, who I adored as a kid. He was so weird and off kilter, but and perfect for a young Scotty who loved comedy, even as a small boy when I first noticed him. And, you know, you know, watching him in the movies, you know, Beverly Hills Cop and the Problem Child films, you know, he's really, of course, he's Iago and Aladdin. And, I, you know, I kind of fell out of Gilbert. I, I, in a way, I thought at one time I outgrew Gilbert. Gilbert was doing these, you know, Gilbert has a, a way of being, you know, non-PC and very raunchy. He's so, so amazing with, with that because, he believes, like I believe, that comedy is not, you know, there's no, nothing off limits in comedy. You have a right to be offended. He, you know, but we have a right to, to make jokes. It's fine. Everyone, it, it, it's not going to, to hurt anyone. And, um, but we lost Gilbert. And I have just been, been a weird place about it. And I'm, I've spent a, the last couple of days watching my favorite Gilbert Godfrey bits. Um, Caleb, were you, how much do you know about Gilbert? Um, not, not too much. Although lately I've been, um, cause I listen to the, uh, comedy serious radio channels, and right. Broadway channels. And I've heard him on the, on the comedy channels cause he's got a show. Right. And well, had a show and he would talk to comedians and he's weirdly funny yeah. and like, it's weird because the one of the most recent shows I heard about with him was him talking about how it was weird with uh, Bob Sager dying. Right, right. They did all. Yeah, they they just did it like so. He had a podcast called Gilbert Godfrey's Amazing Colossal Podcast that I listened to religiously, um, and just like I said, I it was almost like he was part of my family and. Him and, and, and his co uh, Frank uh, Santa Padre, just they'd interview a lot of old Hollywood types and mm-hmm. comedians and just, you know, stuff that I was really, really interested in to the point that my new show, Tuesdays with Scotty, one of the influences was Gilbert Godfrey's Amazing Colossal Podcast. They, they seemed like they were having so much fun. Uh, and I wanted that kind of fun. I'm not saying I didn't have fun. I don't have fun on my other two shows. I love my shows, but having kind of a chat show where I could kind of go off on whatever I wanted to seemed fun and freeing. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't combine to a, to a movie or, or a, an episode of star Wars or something. I'm, this is, I could, I could be kind of let loose and, and talk and Gilbert show. A lot, you know, it was one of the influences that helped me got there that his and uh, Dana Gould, the Dana Gould hour. And of course the dollop and, I am like again, like I said, I'm in this weird place where I'm, you know, I've I've, I've had celebrities die, and I've known celebrities that died, and 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 I'm just, you know, people die. It's part of it. But man, this one hurts. This one really, really hurts. And I, you know, so last night before I went to bed, I was thinking about Gilbert, and and I was looking at my favorite bits. And Gilbert was a, a, a huge Groucho Marx fan. He's a Marx Brothers fan. And he does the most amazing Groucho impression. But it's not like the Groucho you know. It's the elderly Groucho from the 70s. <laughs> when they just got to wheel Groucho out and put him on a talk show. Dick Cavett on his talk show always, always had him on, on. And it's just, you know, just hearing him say, you know, 
you know, Groucho, why'd you, why'd you keep making movies? And it was just like, cause Chico needed the money. It was so funny to me. And, and his Rob's, uh, Rod Steiger impressions and his, uh, oh man, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna miss those. And I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we have the internet because we have them. Yeah. Um, I, <laughs> I watched his very first appearance on Conan O'Brien. So when Conan with the, the late uh, the the uh, late night the late night show, um, Conan was young, his early nineties, I guess, and they had Dick Cavett out, and they dubbed um, Gilbert's voice over Dick Cavett. So Dick Cavett's trying to say what Gilbert's saying, so he's kind of badly pantomiming. And then he's then he would he got up and he left. And this is when Conan had a set had a door. And so Dick goes out the door and then, uh, you know, you hear the, like some rumbling and stuff and the door opens up and here comes Gilbert and he's got like a Dick Cabot suit <laughs> and he comes back and does the rest of the interview. It's hilarious. Um, however, my favorite, I'm, I'm only got all these in, in the show, uh, in the, in the, in the notes and here on the YouTube page, you'll get, so you can, cause I, I, he was more than just this weird, crazy, funny voice. I mean, he's, one of the fastest, quickest, like spur of the moment comedians I have ever seen and still have seen. I mean, you know, he doesn't need a routine. He's got something in, and just in his back pocket always. And um, so uh, he was on Hollywood Squares. And as as the listeners know, especially the Star Wars show, Hollywood Squares, Squares has a special place in my heart. Uh, you know, we have the Jim J. Bullock joke that we keep doing mm-hmm. throughout throughout the Star Wars shows. It's something that me and Drew share. And JD, um, you know, it, it was something we were doing before Caleb even joined us. But there's this great episode of Hollywood Squares where it's the end of the game. And to win the game, someone has to get Gilbert Godfrey. And all the other squares are gone. So it's, it's, it's like you can't even win by tic tac toe. It's got to be one of those weird five versus four squares kind of thing. And so. They keep getting Gilbert, and then they keep getting the answer wrong over and over and over to the point where he's just calling them, you fool! (laughs) Every time he he fools them. It is the funniest thing in the world. And I laughed, and I laughed at that. And like, oh, man, to know that I'm not going to get a new Gilbert is, is just painful. It's just painful. 67 years old, uh, you know, Young, you know, you know, he still still should have had a couple more years left in him. I last I heard, he was still doing some some touring around Florida. He lived in Florida. Yeah, he was, and um, uh, he came to Pensacola, and I, I'm kicking myself. I was when he came to Pensacola. Um, that was when I was sick with 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 my lung stuff, so I was too sick to go, and I wanted to go so bad, but. I'm just not going to get that chance now. He did shows. I was hoping he'd you know do a him at a convention, but never, never, just never crossed paths. So yeah, I only know he was doing shows because one person I wa- I saw on TikTok talked about running into him and talking about the Shudini commercial, right? And, and, and like, even though it was such an awful commercial, Gilbert remembered it because right. he was like, "Oh, it's it's just that bad well, and funny." Know, so do you know Gilbert's on the worst season of SNL? Yeah. So he's on the season where. Arguably the worst season. I, I the the Downey Jr. one I think is pretty bad too. But the um, he's the season where uh, you know right before they get Eddie Murphy, you know all, all the prime mm-hmm. not ready for prime players have left, and it's all this kind of. I watched it when I got Peacock last year, and uh, oh, whew, it was rough. But he was funny. He was <laughs> funny. He, he tells a story of how he found out he got fired from a fan letter. <laughs> so such a such a funny dude and just you know i i am thankful that we 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 got him while we we could and um i'm sad that i'm just not going to get any more so but i i I felt this was the best place to express my 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 sorrows and Mm -hmm. and and i know there's other gilbert godfrey friends out there too and so um so uh go back what uh so watch a marsh brothers or what what film for him or he loved old Universal uh, monster movies. Watch one of those in for him, or or the the Night Swimmer. That's a weird little movie. <laughs> and uh, you know that you know, 
or or the Lon Chaney Jr. version of of Mice and Men. <laughs> so, and uh, if you get a chance, go back and listen to the backlog of um, the 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 Amazing Colossal podcast because you'll learn stuff like how Caesar Romero had a weird orange fetish and um and things like that danny thomas had a weird thing there's a weird story about danny thomas that i I think is hilarious every time he told it and uh so yeah that's what i just want to say i just want to just you know get that out there so uh, thank you for uh listening and letting me ramble and uh check the seriously check out the links below on, on this page so you can uh enjoy some gilbert bye